All right, so when you've got pedal osteitis, pretty much what you've got is you've either got an upright foot that as it comes into the earth, it kind of gets stuck. It has no slat or give anywhere. And when that happens, the coffin bone on the inside will kind of move and jam. So even if they have a lot of sole depth, I have seen pedal osteitis on upright feet because of that jamming. They kind of bruise from the inside when they have an upright foot and they develop pedal osteitis. Now some horses will develop pedal osteitis even though they have a nice sloping uh, foot, but um, maybe they don't have a lot of sole depth. So it doesn't take much outside bruising to cause the uh, uh, coffin bone to respond by tipping upwards. Uh, just, you know, the tip kind of slippers it starts getting like that, and then it begins to uh, kind of decay. So those are some of the causes of pedal osteitis, and there's a whole lot more, just, you know, good normal foot, maybe over uh, hard surfaces, it just can't take it. You know, there's a lot of different consistencies to the bottom of horse's feet, no matter what you see in x-rays. So I'm just gonna talk about shoes that you definitely want to avoid. You wanna avoid any shoe that, uh, like this basic shoe, I mean, unless, you know, this shoe were modified. But if you notice when I set this shoe down, it is very, I mean, it's just squared off to the earth. So I can push on the toe and it doesn't move. So it has no gentle curvature to the toe. What you also do not want are anything that has wear plates. Even if the toe has somewhat of a breakover, which that's not much of one, you don't want any wear plate because that's not going to wear and it's gonna cause pressure underneath um, your horse's pedal osteitis. You also, um, you also wanna avoid anything with a lot of traction at the toe. Um, really a lot of traction at all, especially if it's an upright foot, because what's gonna happen is uh, the foot's gonna come into the ground, it's gonna lock, and that's gonna jam your coffin bone. So, um, and here's an example of what happens with the wear plate. Here's the wear plate in this Kirkhart, and you can see where the horse wore the end, but he couldn't wear it where the wear plate was, and it turns into a toe grab. You can kind of see it sticking out there. So the least amount of traction possible is best for pedal osteitis. And um, also you definitely want what's called a rolling of the toe. Now I'd mentioned rockering, and that very well may be necessary in more extreme cases or just horses that have a tendency to to respond better to rockering. Rockering is gonna be when you're actually going to lift the front of this shoe, you'll bend it over the anvil, you know, and anyway, somebody else will do that for you. And you actually remove some of the uh, end of the toe so that it's kind of, it's rockering. You can also rocker the back so that the whole foot can kind of do this number. And sometimes that's necessary. However, if you don't want to go that extreme and you want to try to, you know, do something a little bit less extreme, this is called a rolled toe. So as you can see on that other shoe, when I pushed on the on the end of the shoe, it wouldn't move, but this rolling action. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow that bone not to get jammed as it, as it uh, moves over the earth and is supported, and it can just kind of gently roll. It takes a lot of the concussive forces, and of course the weight bearing, it just makes it so much easier. If you look at your tennis shoes, this is how your tennis shoes are built at the toe. They kind of roll up so that it's really comfortable. So anyway, this is a shoe. Also, it has, um, of course, no wear plate. This is a steel. And, um, <clears throat> but it has no traction at the toe. That's what you want. This is made by Kurt Cart, and it's called a Comfort. They only come with these uh, clips, and I just knock those right off because barrel horses or our horses typically don't need them. Okay, another shoe that I really like is uh, by Double S. This is the RFA, and again, we have a nice, gentle, easy um, roll at the toe. You also have, uh, for horses that turn a lot, like barrel horses, a lot of ease on the sides so that when that horse comes into the earth when he's turning, um, it doesn't just uh, jam him. He just kinda, it, it just kinda rolls a little bit. Um, some people are afraid this might uh, hurt the ankles and certainly it will if this is too extreme. This is an equilibrium by Mustad and it has the rolling at the toe 
It's got a lot of width of web, no wear plate. This is aluminum, so it's really lightweight. It's also got a lot of width here, which may be really beneficial to a horse that needs extra protection at the toe. Okay, and um, this is the shoe that I reviewed today on Facebook. It's uh, by Con. If you look at this, it has no mechanics built in, but it's very easy to build them in. This is the example of the shoe that uh, I put no mechanics in, but the horse put them in himself. And you can see how a horse wants to make a shoe comfortable for himself. You see that rolling at the toe? And this one doesn't have it. This shoe and this shoe were identical at one point. He's also somewhat eroded the sides. How interesting is that? This is just how the horse makes the shoe more comfortable for himself. So what you want, just to summarize, um, you don't want a wear plate, you want a roll, and if this doesn't help, you may have to do a rocker. You can buy rocker shoes, or a farrier can certainly forge any shoe into a rocker shoe if necessary. Uh, keep an eye on those x-rays, also keep an eye for anything that might look like a toe abscess anywhere. Typically, when you start getting real big problems, you're going to get a little seedy toe or a little toe abscessy right here, sometimes here or here. And when that happens, that's serious time. It's usually not just an abscess. It usually means that you've got some uh, osteomyelitis going on inside, which means that the coffin bone is actually um, discharging itself as it uh, decomposes. And you might have to put the horse on chloramphenicol to stop that from happening because it can really get out of control. Um, anyway, if you ever get a picture of an x-ray, totally send it to me. And uh, maybe um, take a picture of that horse's uh, leg and feet just kind of as it stands and I can kind of take a look and give my guesstimation on what might be going on in there and how to prevent it in the future. Love you, girl. Bye.